Well, hello everyone that might be listening online or wherever you might be tuning into this episode of Girl Talk. I want to say welcome and we are so excited to be sharing with you and with a group of my friends here as well. And uh, we're excited about what God is doing in our lives and he's doing it because he is a faithful God. And before we get started with our conversation, we hope that you'll text a friend and tell them to tune in as well and join us on the online chat. We'd love to hear from from you. We'd love to hear what God is showing you as well and how we can pray for you. But before we do that, would you welcome my dear friend and a fellow worship leader at Harvest, Brittany Farrington, who's going to be sharing a beautiful worship song with us. The Lord bless you and keep you, make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give Is 
Thank you so much, Brittany. What a blessing to hear that song at a time like this. And I don't know what circumstances that you might be finding yourself in. I know for all of us, we are in different places, different seasons of life. Um, just recently, I had a phone call from someone who found out, surprisingly, that she's going to be having a baby. That's great news. We celebrate with her. And then this morning, I was on the phone with another couple whose um, wife is going through some really tough times. She's got cancer, and she's, uh, she's going on hospice, and this is another hard time for her. So in all the rejoicing and in all the weeping, God's word is so relevant. And thank you for that beautiful song, Brittany. It was great. We're so fortunate to have part of our small group today, someone who has such a gift. So um, I'm not going to introduce all these ladies specifically, but I'm going to just say these are the sharp knives in my life. These are the ladies that are the iron that sharpens my iron, and, uh, and that's what the Word of God does when you're in God's Word, right? He does that. He brings alongside people in your life that are there to comfort and help, and, uh, and we want to be that for all the ladies and, and whoever might be listening out there. I don't know. We might have some men eavesdropping in, which is perfectly fine. Um, God uses women, too. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, we have a place in the body, and he has um, used his word in our lives. And today in our group discussion, we are having um, just a reflection back as we come to the end of a series that we've been doing in the life of Moses, how unbelievably relevant God's word is. And I'm going to just... Um, Throw out a question to you guys here. This is not really necessarily uh, Moses centric, but it is um, a good way to start going. And this is what I want to ask you guys: If you could describe one emotion that um, sort of encapsulates this season that we have had in uh, isolation, what would you say? Wow, for me, <laughs> it's surprising emotion. Um, heart sick for people. I'm by nature an introvert, but boy, oh boy, I need people. And so I'm grateful for the technology that we have because we're in isolation, but we're not yeah. alone. And I feel like we as a body have really um, increased our desire to reach out. And I've appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so great. Zenobia, thank you for sharing that. I've, I think we all can relate to that. We've just... I, who knew we would miss that hug, that face-to-face -face communication? We haven't actually seen each other. We don't see each other throughout the week because we're in our own homes. But we're here today, and we're so grateful that we can at least see each other, not through Zoom with glitchy microphones, <laughs> right? Um, what would you say? Someone else. You know, Kathy, you opened with, you know, life is going, is moving on. Yes, we're, you know, in the middle of this COVID crisis, this pandemic that we, none of us could really um, foresee. And it's just so, it's so different right now. But like you just said in your opening remarks, you know, um, sorrow and joy walk the same road. It's not like we're exclusively like, okay, everything's great in our lives and we're happy and joyful and going well. And then, or, or everything is, you know, down in the dumps or terrible, but life is going on and um, God is still faithful. And I'm just so grateful for having been grounded in the word of God. And like Zenovia said, you know, having the community of like-minded um, sisters in Christ mm -hmm. that we can reach out to, I need prayer or just shooting a text of encouragement like that's been our lifeline and I'm so grateful for it yeah it really has been and our zoom meetings I thank God for zoom I never knew about zoom until <laughs> but you know what it has really helped I remember the very first zoom meeting and I could see the support leaders faces you know one by one as they popped on it I was just I I had to cry Mm -hmm. You know, I was just overwhelmed with gratitude mm -hmm. for them, but just to be able to see their face instead of just texting. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's really created a greater craving in my heart for what we have, this community that God has created for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I know uh, for me, it seems like April lasted three years <laughs> and we're not done yet. Um, Lord willing, we'll start seeing some things opening up, and I pray that will happen soon for us here in California. But in the meantime, um, I think the one thing that 
as I reflect on the life of Moses, that they were led out of Egypt, which was very familiar to them. Um, and they were being led into the wilderness for a season. And eventually, God's plan was to take them to a promised land, which was a land they'd never been to before. And yet, they still longed for the old life. If I was going to pick one lesson or a few lessons from our study in the Bible, in the life of Moses, I think that that would be one of them that I would choose, is that God is speaking to us right here and right now that we don't have to be looking back to the way things were, but we need to be flexible and following the leading of the Spirit because Egypt was... It was not the best place in the world. They were slaves and they were their, their firstborn children were being sacrificed and, and laid on the altar of, so to speak, they were being killed. But they wanted to go back to that. They were familiar with that. All they could remember was what was good about the past. And for us in, in this day, in this moment, some of us do feel like we need to go back to that normal. Let's just get this over with. Let's go back. But God is, I don't think he wants us to go back. I don't think he, you know, I mean, what was so great about being overly distracted with minutia and, and not appreciating the people that live under the same roof with us or in the same neighborhoods as us? There's so many good things that have come out of this, but what would you say, Sue? Um, I would say a few things. I think all of us have felt the loneliness of just being alone and not being able to get in our cars, and so that's kind of universal, but I have such a new appreciation for see you on Wednesday, see you Sunday, see yeah. you tomorrow, see you at lunch, and just a new appreciation for what we kind of took for granted in ways. Even just a hug or a handshake just for Pete's a, sake. It's like, yeah. are we never going back to that? Oh my goodness, <laughs> and the Lord's just kind of, but also I appreciate, I didn't realize how busy I was. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, just taking inventory of that and, and sitting back and going, what is really important. What do I really need? And, mm -hmm. and I think I needed that to do that. But um, as far as just seeing everyone, it, it's hard for all of us. It's hard for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Israelites didn't have much of a chance to say goodbye either. They were up in the net, you know, Passover came, the, the, the death of the firstborn, and they were out of Egypt, and they didn't really have a whole lot of time. They had to be ready to go, and they left everything behind in Egypt, absolutely everything. And we're venturing into this new life in the wilderness for a season. And I, I can't help but think of you, Brittany, because your life um, was really uh, circled around leading worship on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights and other things that, you know, that has completely changed, hasn't it? Yeah, it's um, it's been actually very nice for me because I have a one-year-old and I never really had time to, um, you know, she always came with me and she would actually be on stage with me while I did sound check. And um, it's been nice to almost see what it's like to be a stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's in that transition phase right now from baby to toddler. And so it's been so sweet getting to help her learn her first words and take her first steps. And that's those are things that I wouldn't necessarily have been have had a lot of time for yeah. before this. And, and I think I took that for granted. And so it's been kind of like what you said, Sue. It's been so nice to um, just have that extra time and really not only focus on my relationship with the Lord and dig deeper than I ever even did when, mm -hmm. when I was at church all the time and um, really focus on my family and, and establishing that as well. Yeah, so there's some really wonderful things that are happening in the midst of all of this, right? I think the the one emotion I would say is just like, I keep shaking my head. It's like, this is, is this really happening? Uh, is this really happening? I mean, is this is sort of this unbelief that we are all collectively all around the world going through the same stuff, you know, with this thought of the future and what that might be. It reminds me a little bit of what it was like after 9-11 where it was like, okay, there was the world before 9-11 and the world after 9-11. And um, now, you know, you can't just jump on a plane with your knitting needles and your bottle full of water and your shoes on. You have to go through all this stuff. And yeah. 
what will life be like after this? And I think that goes back to how God's promising us, just like he promised Moses and the children of Israel. He's going to walk them through this. He's not going to lead them. He's going to carry them out. Yeah. He's going to bring them to himself. And no, it's not going to look like it did before. Yeah. But we as Christians and as believers can look with hope. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, you know, I think things are different, Kathy. But we have to remember the children of Israel, going back to the context of our Bible study, they were in a different place, too. I mean, they were so used to Egypt. That was the norm. And even though it was not a good place, they, that was, you know, that was a comfortable place for them. And so here God is, you know, leading them through the wilderness. And they had to learn to know who their God was. They didn't know who God was. Yeah. And so not only was he going to reveal himself to Moses, but it he was revealing himself to his own children. And we just see how, you know, God was so faithful at every turn, you know, I'm the God who rescued you, redeemed you, made a way where there was no way. I fed you, I led you, I, you know, protected you, I provided for you. And so with every revelation of God, they had a choice to make. Were they going to trust this faithful, loving God of theirs, or are they going to shrink back in fear? And I think we're in the same exact position as far as that goes. We're in a new spot, but God is still faithful, yeah. you know, and he wants to develop something in us. Yeah. Yeah. So where are you at? Are you saying, gung-ho, I'm all in, <laughs> take me wherever, Lord? I don't know what the future looks like. He may erase what we think the future would be like, and he may be saying, trust me. And I, for me, I'm like, sometimes... I'm all gung-ho, and then the next moment I'm like, oh, Lord, this is so scary. This is hard. Yeah. And uh, it's really hard for a lot of people who are financially yeah. in trouble, and they are having to literally lean on the promises of God that he said he would provide and he would be there like the Lord provided manna in the wilderness for the children of Israel just enough to get them through that day, right? Yeah. Well, even for... Um, for people who are having this financial difficulty, who've lost their jobs or whatever the, whatever the hardest part of this is for, for everyone, the, the next thing, whether it's getting their job back or just being able to go outside freely, that's the land flowing with milk and honey. And before Moses died, his, his main focus was when you get there. You know, when you get your job back, mm -hmm. when uh, things open up again, when you can hug your friends again, yeah. don't forget Amen. the yeah. Lord. He is faithful. Love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we are getting that opportunity to do that now before we come out of this yeah. difficult time. I feel like the Lord is answering so many prayers on so many levels. I believe he's answering personal prayers, and I believe he's answering corporate prayers of the church. But, you know, they had cried out, the children of Israel, they had cried out to the Lord in Exodus 6. It says that he heard their cries. He heard their cries. Yes. And he was going to deliver them up out from their heavy burdens. But I just imagine, you know, putting myself in their sandals that they probably thought maybe God was going to change the heart of the Pharaoh. You know, maybe mm -hmm. he would be kind to them or something different might happen, you know, that uh, maybe not necessarily leaving Egypt. Maybe they didn't have that vision that they would actually be leaving Egypt. Maybe they thought that things would just get better mm -hmm. for them in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But Egypt was not their home. God was taking them to the promised yes. land. And we want to make life easier here for us, right? We want to do that. We want things easier. But this is not our home. Mm -hmm. Our citizenship is in heaven, our yes. promised land. And that's yeah. where he's taking us. I am convinced, stubbornly convinced, that what we think about God and about his plans, mm -hmm. his plans are going to be better no matter what, no matter what you may be thinking right now, that his plans are going to be better than what we ever expected. I, I want him to write this story in my life. I want to follow him on that journey and not look back. You know, I was thinking of Moses and probably every day was a hard day for him. I mean, really, in reality. <laughs> All that grumbling and complaining every and whining day. about the manna. <laughs> yes, every day was just a hard day, I'm sure. But what I, I liked looking at his life this year so much 
more the human side of him. But um, he always ran to the Lord. He always ran to the tent, uh, to the tabernacle, and he got on his face, and they talked intimately as if face to face. And because every day was, he was in the center of the Lord's will, mm -hmm. but it was hard. But he got encouragement and strength in the Lord again over and over. Moses, I'm with you. I'm, I'm going yes. to get you through. I'm going to do this, yes. and you tell the people that. And, and that's encouraging because every moment that we, every morning when I wake up, my phone goes off and it's not good news. My news feed is not, it's like, oh, oh no, more casualties, more this. So then I have to go back and I open the word of God and I go, tell me, speak to me. Mm -hmm. Because this looks really bad and mm -hmm. it is bad. Mm -hmm. But your word promises mm -hmm. different. I love that you said that, Sue, because we don't want to minimize people's, you know, pain and reaction and how, because everyone's going through this slightly differently, right? Mm -hmm. Um and what you're saying too about Moses, like I just, the heart of Moses, like he pleaded with the Lord, like I need your presence. Yeah. So I think that's what I've learned too, Kathy. It's like, stop telling God how you need for him to change your circumstances and what he, th you know, what you think he, you need to have happen. But I just feel like I'm pleading for his presence, like in this moment, God, mm. just make yourself mm. so real to me in this moment, you know? So your circumstances might not change that second, yeah. but God's presence will change will change you in a moment, yeah. you know? And I think it also, how we change is how we use the word of God at times like this. Yeah. Because um, Moses, like you were talking about, Sue, would run to the Lord and he would cry. Yeah. And I think sometimes we think that as Christians, we need to put on this sort of pseudo um, spirituality and say with our words things that perhaps that we aren't experiencing in our heart like oh God's on the throne he's going to get us through this um, tomorrow's going to be a better day um, all those kind of platitudes when you're really in the fire and there are people out there that are in the fire right now um, there's they're struggling to breathe they're struggling for the next day it's okay because the Bible gives us permission to speak to God honestly. Moses cried to the Lord so much. I just loved it. It was like, God, these are your people. The Lord says, no, they're your people. He's like, no, they're not. They're your people. And you promised and you better show up. And, and I think it's okay when you're going through really tough stuff and, and we go through tough stuff and that we would just acknowledge that God is, he is so great and so gracious and he can see right through us and knows really the reality of what we're experiencing. It's okay to cry out to him when we're struggling or when we're doubtful or when we're fearful. He's there and present even in that. Brittany, tell me about your little one. How's this working out with the being at home a lot? I know it's a blessing to be there. And how is Donnie doing? He, both of them were very, um, it was touch and go for a while with their health. And then having this come on top of it must have been difficult. Yeah, this this has been quite the year <laughs> mm -hmm. um, with, you know, Swayze having those seizures and then Donnie's cancer. And um, mm. I can't remember who said it, but somebody said that, that when you go through something, it makes you see God in a different light. Yeah. And not that I didn't, you know, love the Lord before any of this happened, but he was he was just... He was there and I had never gone, th gone through something in my life that, that required me to just completely fall on my face in front of him. Mm -hmm. And so when, when all of this happened, her, her seizures and then Donnie's cancer and then me needing emergency surgery and then, mm -hmm. and then Donnie's surgery two weeks later, I, I have never cried more in my life mm -hmm. than in the, the first three months of this year. Wow. But I have to say, God is, God showed himself to me in such a real way yeah. and every time I just started to feel so overwhelmed I, he was just there and there was just this this unexplainable peace wow. and I, I could just feel him say I'm I'm here yeah. I love you I'm holding you I'm here with you through all of this and you know everything with with Donnie's cancer he was he brought it to our attention just in time before it became mm. much worse. Right. And, um, 
And so I just, I remember saying to the Lord, God, I just need some time. And man, he gave it to me (laughs) (laughs) because here we are, but it's, it's been so nice. You know, Donnie's hours got cut in half, which at first we were like, Mm. oh no, what are we going to do? But we've had mornings together that we've never had before. Mm. And we've had more nighttime together. And, and I just, everything so far this year has just made me value family and having that time together. Mm. And I'm just so grateful that the Lord is, has brought us through some of it. He's still bringing us through some of it, but we're still in, you know, we're still in the desert for some of it, but, but the promised land is there Yeah, (laughs) and God is so gracious. And I know that we're going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I believe there's going to be a day when your daughter grows up and you're going to be able to tell her of this mm. time, right? Because you're going to be able to speak about God's faithfulness. And yeah. as mothers, that's what we are called to do. That was another one of the big lessons from the life of Moses. You know, he says, don't forget. And we need to speak those things yes. to the next generation. Yeah. And that's a big part of not forgetting is by speaking and reminiscing our stones of remembrance yep. of how faithful God has been. And for us, we've been eyewitnesses. We've We've right. been able to see how God has met every one of your needs. It wasn't easy, mm-hmm. but he met every one of mm-hmm. your needs. And that we got to participate in supporting you has yeah. really been a blessing. I, I heard something the other day. Um, I can't ex- remember exactly how it was said, but it, it basically was if, if you still don't have time to be in God's word now, then time was never the issue. Right. And that's right. that, that I read, I read so, that too. That's, yeah. that is good. That's been so that convicting good. for me yep. because it's like, mm-hmm. I have so much time now and, yeah. and I need to be in the word now more than ever, especially as, as somebody that's on the front line of the church. Mm. Right. We, we need to be on our, on our A game all the time. And, and this was just for what, yeah. I think this was the perfect study to take us yeah. into this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how just, relevant has it been? Right. <laughs> I mean, really. And it's so great that you're able to um, learn those lessons, such a young person with such a young child, and then be able to share it with all of us because uh, it brings me back in my memory to times when, when my kids were little and we were struggling along, you know, just really barely making it and how God's faithfulness was there. He was there. And in the hardest of times, we see him more clearly. Um, he's with us all the time. But when we get desperate is when we really, right. really get a sense of who he is and his comforting presence in our lives. Yeah, it's, you know, there's one thing to know the character of God through what we read in the word. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are to trust that, but to experience it is it's a whole new level. Yes. Um, to see the Lord as your healer is different than hearing he is the healer, but no, he is your healer. And you mm-hmm. experienced that, you know, and your provision, even though the hours were cut, these are things that we can't, we have to be grateful for, even yeah. though this yeah. is a difficult time. And, and Moses, the same thing, you know, like Sue said, it was always hard and so much. That's why he was so much closer to the Lord because the harder it was, the more he clung to him. Had to draw near, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, I was thinking of that with every test or when the Lord would say to Moses, go tell the people this or here comes the next plague and he had to announce it. I know that must have been hard. And with everything, though, you watch Moses being timid in the beginning, and all of a sudden the man he was, with every trial, with every step of faith Mm. and obedience, Mm. he became this mighty man of God. Till the end of his life, you just see, wow, because of just, and it was every trial that we go through, we go, wow. And we may not feel it now, but we look back and go, that did make me stronger. I trust him more. I've seen him work then, and I'll see him work again. I think we sometimes feel like if we're walking in the center of God's perfect will, that it's going to be easy. (laughs) You know, that he is going to just part those waters. But it's not necessarily going to be easy, you know, and and it can actually make us doubt, you know, am am I really following after you? Did I hear your voice when it gets hard? Yes. It was hard. It was hard for Moses. It was hard for the people. But they were following the Lord. 
yeah. they were following. And God will always bless our obedience yeah. because sometimes we have we think that we have to understand the whole fullness of the plan before we can obey. But see, we have to trust in the character of God and his faithfulness. And we're like, okay, God, I'm just going to trust you yes. and I'm going to obey you. And he will bring, you know, that obedience. And, and you know, Kathy, too, like, I know, I think that it's okay. We don't want to have throw out platitudes, but I think it's okay as Christian women who, um, who are drawing their strength from the word of God mm -hmm. and the presence of God. It's okay that we demonstrate or, or we're an example of, of genuine joy, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and peace. Um, not that we're not going to have times where we, you know, can spiral sometimes, but you know what? It's good for us to, um, to really stand on the truth and the belief mm -hmm. of, of what we know mm -hmm. because that's real and I think you know that's what other people are going to see and Lord willing that's what's going to draw them like what is it because I I'm I'm sitting here and I'm in awe that I get to sit with you ladies you you <laughs> ladies are you know women of truth and you do know the word of God and you're living out the word of God and I see that in you and I'm drawn to it and um I I think that's okay too you know to Absolutely. To let our lights shine for yes, Jesus. Yes, yes. And it's in those moments of where we are in difficult places, like Paul and Silas there in the, you know, the prison, that they sang out praises to God. Um, they weren't in denial of yeah. the fact that their backs had been ripped open, that their feet were in shackles, or that they were chained and imprisoned in a dark place. But their praises to God in the midst of that darkness. And you know, the children of Israel, when we studied their lives and we studied the story of Moses, I think the thing that surprised me was God chose to move in different ways. The Red Sea parted and they walked through on dry land and he took care of Pharaoh's army. That was one way in which he worked. Another way in which he worked was when they had to battle with the Amalekites. There were people out there, Joshua and Caleb and others, who were out there fighting the battle. And Moses was on the mountaintop interceding. Now, could God have just rained down fire and brimstone and destroyed the, the army? He could have. But I think that learning the ways of God in the midst of all of what we're going through, we don't know how God's going to require us to move? Is he going to say, stand still and you just watch and see me work? Or is he going to say, get on your sword and get out there and battle? So we have to be really um, open to the Holy Spirit and open to the specific path that he has for us to walk on. Because every one of us you know, God has an appointed time, an appointed call upon our lives and what we go through and the journey that you've been through or I've been through or you, Melanie, or Sue, you've been through, you know, those are specific. God is so wonderful in being able to draw us and bring us with what we need when we need it. And I know for you, you Sue, you've been studying the Bible for a long time, but you've been challenged in, in recent years years, just this last year, um, your husband was suddenly called to heaven. And this new walk, this new path, this journey that you have had to walk has been a difficult one, but you've seen the Lord there in the midst of it all. As you've been studying the life of Moses, how would you say he's spoken to you? Um, oh, in so many ways. I think too, also with this sheltering home, um, over the years I had I kept busy because I was with people and at church and busy. Well, it looks different when you're at home mm. and you're not sharing it with your husband. But the Lord, and you know, I've always said all the years that I've known the Lord, you're my husband, you're my husband. Well, he really is. Mm. And it, it is in a newer and a deeper way and the dependence on him. And, and I'm writing my scriptures on my chalkboard and it's saying I'm carrying you on, the, yeah. on my wings and I'm holding you and I'm yeah. going to get you through. And it takes on, like we've said, a newer meaning mm. in, our, in my life for sure. Mm -hmm. Are there loneliness? Yes. But there is also a peace a different piece where I always think sometimes it's almost like I feel guilty that I feel okay. Yeah. Um, and yet I know it's the Lord. I know it's supernatural. Yeah. And watching Moses, he was 40 years in the desert alone, mm. but God was still preparing him for another 40 years. Wow. And I think when you're in the desert, he is still preparing you. 
there it's not for nothing nothing's mm -hmm. wasted in our lives and he will prepare mm -hmm. us and he mm -hmm. has he's been um i'm clinging to him he is my yeah. life for sure so beautiful i just think of that scripture in corinthians as a matter of fact i i printed it out in the message because i love this translation it says all praise to the God and Father of our Master, Jesus the Messiah, Father of all mercy, God of all healing counsel. He comes alongside us when we go through hard times. And before you know it, he brings us alongside someone else who is going through hard times so that we can be there for that person just as God was there for us. We have plenty of hard times that come from following the Messiah, but no more so than the good times of healing comfort. We get a full measure of that too. And I just know that even though we are going through times right now that are really hard and really challenging, God promises us that in the midst of that, he will comfort us and then in turn we'll comfort one another. And I'm sure that the words that you guys have shared have really comforted. And, and that word comfort is a really good one because it means to strengthen. It means with fortification with strength and it's not just a, a cozy blanket that you throw over everybody you know it's really strengthening to hear how God's word has been sufficient and that God has been sufficient and met us in the hardest of places and um, and I just want to say to everybody out there um, as we've been discussing what we've learned in the scriptures this year my challenge and my encouragement to you is to find a circle of believers that can draw from the Word of God instruction, guidance, wisdom, counsel, provision for what you're going through right now. We are told that the scriptures are all sufficient for everything that we have need of, but sometimes we don't know what the scriptures have until we really have just the Word of God. And right now, the future looks pretty um, unscripted. So. If anything, I would encourage you to dive deep into the study of God's word and to gather around you others who have that same desire to learn together. And uh, for those of you that don't know, we have a beautiful website. It's called Virtue, and you can look it up at virtue.harvest.org. We also encourage you to continue to follow us with um, this, uh, this series, Girl Talk, as well as our um, Harvest at Home, which is what we're doing at uh, at our church. We're encouraging everybody out there that doesn't have a home church to just join us in this wonderful um, opportunity to be online together, worship together, be instructed together. And for those of you that don't know Jesus, those of you that perhaps have walked away from him, can I just tell you that he stands with open arms. He is waiting for you. He is there in the midst of your suffering, in the midst of your isolation, wherever you might be, God is present and he is the God who has suffered. So he is truly our best comforter and our most faithful friend. So reach out to him and you can do that so simply. You say, well, why do I need to reach out to him? Maybe I'm doing just great. I've got a great family. I've got friends. I'm going to get through this. I haven't lost my job. Let me just tell you that every one of us needs a savior because every one of us sins. We need to be forgiven of those sins and we are separated from God by our sin. But until we recognize our need for him, and maybe this is that time in your life where you're saying, I had all this stuff and it never satisfied me and now I don't know what I have in the future. Can I tell you that God may be using this moment to draw you to himself or draw you back to himself. And the way you do that is by simply praying. You could pray a simple prayer like this. God, forgive me. I am a sinner. I've broken your laws. I've broken your commandments. I've walked away from you and tried to live my own life. And I need you to forgive me. I need you to come into my life, to give me the guidance and the comfort and the protection and the way forward as I give my life over to you right now. Holy Spirit, come into my heart and fill me with the joy that surpasses my circumstances. For I ask it in Jesus' name.
Amen. We would love to hear from you. And if you would like to reach out to us, you can do that easily at knowgod.org. We would be happy to send you a Bible with amazing notes to help you get grounded in the Word of God. And please join us on Virtue. There's a lot of information and comfort you'll find there. We'd love to walk with you through this. Let us know in your comments. If you're part of the chat, we'd love to pray for you. Let us know how we can do that better. And share with us, what is God showing you through this time? Thank you so much for joining us. And I am hoping that the Lord will be with you and walking with you through this season. And before we go, we have a special song for you from Brittany that's called Another in the Fire. And I hope you know that there is another in the fire with you. And his name is Jesus. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There was another in the fire There was another in the fire All my debt left for dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world And I know I'll never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I Between worse than I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us, nothing stands between. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus He who was and still is and will be through it all So come what may in the space between All the things unseen and this reckoning And I know I will never be alone the 
possible that we need to view suffering as a privilege and not as a punishment? Those words sound pretty amazing, but they are written by the most beautiful couple who know exactly what they're talking about, Jay and Catherine Wolf. They have written a book called Suffer Strong, and I can't think of a better resource to get in your hands at a time like this. You can easily do that for your gift of any size. Just go to harvest.org, and we will put this in your hands as quickly as possible. God bless you, and thank you for your gifts.